Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to finish ranking every LEGO Ninjago Dragon. We've been through numbers 53 to 18 in the previous two videos, so now let's look at the last 17 to determine which ones are the best. Let's go! Okay, I promise this is the last video you'll have to hear that annoying transition scene in, but number 17 is the Overlord's Dragon from Ninjago Legacy Wave 4 in 2021. I'd say the Overlord Dragon is universally agreed upon as being long overdue. It's an absolute travesty that we did not get this back in 2013 to go with Lloyd's Golden Dragon. It could have even come with Garbodon's Cursed Dragon hybrid form. And I can only imagine the prices it would go for today. Also, where's our four-armed Garmadon mech? Where's more Stone Warrior vehicles? Where's the set of the Dark Matter Mine? There are so many things Season 2 could have done with more sets, but there's not a lot of point complaining about it now seeing as it was over a decade ago. Which is why it was so important for Legacy to deliver, and I would say it did for the most part. Honestly, Legacy could still be going strong today without even scratching the surface of the Wild Brain era. If it hadn't been killed, of course, but I've gotten a little off track here. The Overlord Dragon here looks nice, if a little bit small. The molded head on this one looks especially menacing with the pieces that were also used on Mojira that year. And the purple and dark blue make for a nice combo as well. Something interesting to me is that this is the only Legacy set I have never personally seen in store, and I'm not quite sure why. Anyway, moving along. In 16th place is the third of the eight or nine separate Lloyd Dragons, this one being labelled with three important letters, N, R and G. Yes, it's Lloyd's NRG Dragon from the second Ninjago Skybound Wave in 2016, and I believe this is supposed to represent his elemental dragon that was used throughout seasons 4 to 7. This dragon is an interesting one, because it was released in a kind of weird time for Ninjago, late 2016, when Day of the Departed released and Ninjago was in a kind of mediocre phase. Now, this one's actually from Ninjago Skybound, as indicated by the pirate flag on the box, as with the other two Skybound sets released alongside the June 2016 wave. The dragon itself looks pretty cool, and the wings in particular are very unique, being with what looks like gold on the bottom, very shiny gold, and green on top. The brick built head isn't horrible, but there's room for improvement, and the lantern on the back is a nice touch. Also, the two tails is different. This is the standout of the three Ninjago Skybound dragons to me. Entering the top 15 now, we have a very classic LEGO Ninjago dragon from my childhood, and a fan favourite, the Titanium Dragon. This was one of the first Ninjago Dragons I actually got, so I've always held it very highly, so I'll try and be as unbiased as possible, which is kind of a moot point because this whole list is my own opinion anyway. This dragon was the first one belonging to Zane since Shard four years earlier, and this absolutely knocked it out of the park. The colour scheme is awesome, incorporating lots of silver to represent the titanium part of it, and the wings are cool despite being only brick built and using no specialised large textile piece. I also love the piece used on the tail. This was the first elemental NRG dragon and I think it kicked off the series with a bang. Number 14 is another classic Ninjago dragon, this one being the Master Wu dragon from 2015. I don't know if I should be referring to this as classic Ninjago, but the show's changed so much by this point that I consider basically anything before the start of the Wild Brain era five years ago as classic. Even the Oni trilogy is starting to feel old. Anyhow, this was the second elemental dragon after Zane's, as Lloyd, Cole, Jay and even Kai to a lesser degree would receive one the next year. This is the first time to me that Wu feels really like part of the team. Usually he's just guiding the ninja, but this set makes it feel like he's battling alongside them. I love the primarily white colour with the tail piece just mentioned in gold here on the wings, and the unikitty tail piece being used as a beard here has always amused me. Though comparing this to Egolt for a second, this dragon does look like it could have used a hat. And the last thing I want to point out is the clever use of a chainsaw piece on the tail, as well as croissants and guns on the head. Incredibly creative piece usage on this one. The 13th spot goes to the Legacy Ultra Dragon. The Ultra Dragon was definitely deserving of a remake, and they did a good job of it for the most part. Right up front, my two least favourite parts of this are the handle on the back and the brick built heads. Though the handle is crucial to the set's main feature, but the heads aren't as cool to me as the original rubber ones. The wings are vinyl this time around, and the tail looks pretty similar to the original. Though most of my nitpicks about this are pretty small, and the whole thing overall looks very impressive. It's quite a formidable size and the function is cool. It definitely captures the essence of the Ultra Dragon, though one major problem with this set is the removal of the Great Devourer, so now the dragon doesn't really have anything to actually fight. I think this is the worst of the three Ultra Dragons, but it is still a very faithful and respectful remake. 
Morrow's Dragon is in 12th place, and this is a set I have always viewed as being nearly unachievable levels of awesome. This was the coolest possession set out of all of them when it released, and the build is very different to the previous dragons by that point. This dragon looks a lot more like a traditional Japanese dragon due to the ribbony curvy body shape. The colours on this one are standout with the pale green contrasting very well with the dark blue and the green chains or should I say reins are a nice touch. This dragon is topped by a large throne to be ridden by the one and only possessed Lloyd in one of only two appearances of this figure. The head looks very fierce but the mouth may be a bit too straight looking. Though I think this one will go down in Ninjago history as one of the best villain dragons of all time. Number 11 is Jiro, a fairly recent dragon who appeared in the Elemental Dragon vs Empress mech set in 2023. If you had asked me 6 months ago what I thought the best dragon's rising dragon was, I would have firmly and confidently answered this. As of June this year, that title has been claimed by another very worthy competitor, more on that later, but this one is still a very enjoyable dragon. The whole shaping on Jiro's torso is very rigid and upright, lending it to a more permanently tall and intimidating look than some of the other dragons that kind of crawl along on all fours. Even with this preformed angle though, it can still be suspended in a flight position and look relatively natural. I love the use of pale yellow highlights on here, matching Jay's current colour scheme. And speaking of Jay, he's depicted riding this dragon even though he's barely in this season. Like Wu in the Destiny's Bounty Race Against Time set. So think about that, those of you who keep commenting that they couldn't have included all four original ninja in the Ultra Trash Raider. Anyway, that's barely relevant, so let's return to the main specimen. The transparent yellow electric highlights are awesome and the head looks fantastic. The first Dragon's Rising wave kicked off the new show in a huge way, and this is one of the highlight dragons of Dragon's Rising. And now we have made it to the highly coveted top 10 section, and if I had a dollar for every time I've said dragon so far, I could probably buy a real one. Out of all 53 LEGO Ninjago dragons ever made, these are the 10 most incredible, breathtaking, notable and game changing entries. If you're enjoying the video so far, please consider taking a moment to leave a like or comment your own thoughts on the dragons we have discussed today. Thank you and now it's time to look at the final 10. Coming in at number X for the Roman numeral fans, we have one of the very first four dragons ever made, Flame from the Fire Temple set in 2011. In terms of set numbers, this is the second ever Ninjago dragon, the first one surprisingly being Shard, but that doesn't matter too much as all of these four are in a league of their own. I love this dragon so much, even though it's pretty simple by today's standards, it still looks fantastic. The wings have the classic look using these big helicopter blades in orange, and as is usual with these early Ninjago dragons, the best part is the head, which is incredibly detailed and can shoot a ball from its mouth. This is probably one of my top 5 most wanted LEGO Ninjago dragons, however the legacy one of this slightly overshadows it. And speak of the devil, number 9 just happens to be the legacy version of Flame. If there's one thing this set proves, it's how beneficial 10 years of new piece and technique developments can be. This dragon takes everything good about the original and enhances it by 10. The best part of this model has to be the abs on it, which is surprisingly well crafted. The head is shrunk down but still looks great, and the wings use fabric instead of just being brick built. And this is one of the few LEGO Ninjago dragons where you can actually fold the wings up. The colours are phenomenal of course, and this set just goes to show how amazing legacy versions of Shard, Rocky and Wisp could have been. The only problem here is that the wings don't seem to be able to hold themselves up too well, but I'm not sure if that's just a problem with this copy of the set or just the set in general. And when the wings are down like this, it's kind of crawling around, and it reminds me of the Ukrainian Iron Valley from Harry Potter. Legacy went above and beyond with so many sets, and this was no exception. In 8th place is the first ever dragon with a brick built head in Ninjago, the Nindroid Mech Dragon released in early 2014. I recall seeing this release and thinking it was like the coolest thing ever, and even a decade later I still think it's the coolest thing ever. The large spinning saw blades on the front look so intimidating, and I love the large missile on top of it. Also the jail cell for Lloyd is pretty cool, and this has always kind of looked to me like the evil version of the Ultra Dragon, just with less heads. And speaking of heads, this one isn't the best, but to be fair this was the start of the brick built head era, so you gotta give them some slack. And a related little fun fact is that this set appears in the TV movie SEO Trot, based on the Roald Dahl book. Sorry for the low quality pictures, but here you can clearly see this kid not only has the Nindroid Mech Dragon that he apparently forgot to put stickers on, but also the Golden Dragon and I think some Technic sets. And as far as I know, I'm the only person on the internet to notice this, but maybe not. I just thought I should mention that. Now moving on to number 7. 
The Golden Ultra Dragon takes the number 7 spot, this being the most recent version of the Ultra Dragon, having been released in 2022 for the original show's final season. This is the most golden dragon so far, even more golden than the golden dragon, probably because this one is the ultra golden dragon. It actually looks like it's made of caramel chocolate to me though. This one does the same kind of thing as Lloyd's legendary dragon with the puffed out chest, and it looks very cool here. The heads look pretty great using the new molded pieces, meaning we've had an ultra dragon with every different style of head, and the wings here just feel a little bit lacking in my opinion, but as with most modern Ninjago dragons, it looks awesome when you view it overall. In 6th place is Firstborn, who was released for Ninjago Season 9 in 2018. This looks like a staple Ninjago dragon to me. Is it red? Check. Has it got legs? Check. Is it being ridden by Kai or Lloyd? Also check. This one just looks exactly like what you would expect a stereotype dragon to look like. There's no fancy gimmicks or super wacky colours, it's kind of just a pure dragon and that's what I like about it. The included villain helicopter makes for a nice throwback to the lightning dragon battle as well. Some dragons lean too far into the realm of wacky and look weird, and some are just plain, but to me this one is just about right. And now we enter the top 5 best Ninjago dragons of all time, with number 5 being Griefbringer, aka the Skull Sorcerer's Dragon released in mid-2020. In terms of length and width, this was the biggest Ninjago dragon, a title which it held for an impressive 4 years, until just one month ago. But despite that size, this dragon is mostly bone dry, because this is actually a dragon resurrected from the dead. It's got this cool feature where it can drop rocks from its ribcage, and I like the fabric black wings. This dragon looks even cooler with the Skull Sorcerer himself on top of it. Unfortunately, the copy I have here seems to have lost all its structural integrity. One of the pieces even snapped and had to be replaced by different pieces, sadly. But that does not harm my view of this dragon. This is definitely one to go down in the Ninjago history books. In fourth place is the first ever J Dragon and my favourite of the original four, Wisp from the Lightning Dragon Battle. I don't know why, but something about this dragon just hits different, and it just manages to look amazing. And this thing is gigantic. They've probably enlarged it a bit here, but if you look at the box and compare it to the Skeleton Helicopter, or Skelicopter if you will, this thing looks like a mini flying kaiju. The colours are phenomenal, and it looks great with the rare DXJ on top. This set looks incredible, and it's no wonder it fetches a small fortune these days. Now we enter the top 3. These are my picks for the best LEGO Ninjago Dragons of all time, with number 3 being the original Ultra Dragon from the Epic Dragon Battle set in 2012. This thing is legendary, it's like the holy grail of all Ninjago Dragons. It takes the previous 4 and combines them into something a little strange while simultaneously epic as the name implies. It still looks good even 12 years after its release, and in my opinion looks better than the newer two versions. Unfortunately, I never got the chance to acquire it when it was around, though luckily there are still plenty for sale and I would love to add this one to my collection in the near future. At number 2, we have the original Golden Dragon from 2013. I'll go over this one pretty fast because I've talked about it a lot before, but this set is fantastic. It was my first ever Ninjago Dragon, so it's very nostalgic to me, and it shows exactly what a Ninjago Dragon should be. If you thought the Green Ninja was cool, well, just wait until you saw the Golden Ninja. This is a set I will cherish forever. And now we finally move on to number 1. I would give an honourable mention here, but I've already discussed every other Ninjago Dragon there is, so I have nothing to mention. But the number 1 spot, unsurprisingly, goes to... The Source Dragon of Motion, released in June 2024 for Dragons Rising Season 2. A large part of this is recency bias, as this set only came out a month ago, so we'll see how I feel about it in 6 months. But there is also a lot of admiration for this set. This dragon to me feels unlego like It is so detailed and generous with what it does that it feels really like a mock. It is shockingly big. I was mentally comparing it to Griefbringer in size before I got it, but it could crush Griefbringer any day of the week. But the level of detail on this presents a problem, because now, just like with Cole's Titan mech, fans are going to expect this of every large Ninjago dragon. And if I'm being honest, I don't expect every future dragon to live up to this, nor should we. As fans, we should be happy with a one-off treat of a set. And this is the only time I'll mention price in this video, but 150 US dollars is not quite worth it. 125 would have been a bit more fair in my opinion. However, I'm sure this will come under clearance sometime later this year or next year. Anyway, I can imagine this set being like the Ultra Dragon to newer fans. 
Imagine right now there's a kid who just gets into Ninjago this year and gets his set for Christmas or their birthday. And then in 10 years, they will cherish it as much as us older fans cherish those early dragons. I think this set has truly made a monumental mark on not just Ninjago, but possibly LEGO in general's history. Thank you to everyone who watched all three parts of this series. Sorry if I spoke too quick, I didn't really want this video to go for half an hour. If you would like to see me rank all of the mechs next, then let me know in the comments, and also let me know your thoughts on the dragons we talked about. I would love to hear what your favourite is. If you haven't seen part 1 or 2, I recommend you click here. That's been all for today folks, have a great day and see you next week.